Hey everybody, this is Chris from T3 Handicapping. Uh, I'm going to be going over the card for Tuesday, September 7th, uh, 2021 at Indiana Grand. Uh, and I'm going to be going over things a little bit differently today uh, based on some power ratings I developed uh, and back tested over the weekend that have been working really well for me. So if you're interested in grabbing just the original grids, uh, you'll be able to find those on my Twitter. You can follow me at Handicapping T3. Uh, and you can also read uh, my write-ups on bettingnews.com using a lot of the same methodology that I'll be using here. So uh, like I I said things will look a little different today uh same methodology but i just basically took the strike system and the t3 grids and i combined them into a power rating um, so that it all kind of has a more comprehensive number so let's go ahead and let's dive right into it so we're going to start here uh five and a half for long state bread claimers 10 uh 10, on 3x uh, going five and a half on the dirt so uh things look like they're going to be fine from a weather perspective uh out at indiana tomorrow uh, or later today, depending on when you're watching this. Um, and so let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see I didn't mark any of the boxes or any of the strikes. Um, I just put the power rating and then their letter grade. Now, one thing you're going to notice uh, about these letter grades is that because we're at Indiana Grand, um, over here I've got two different letter grades for every horse. The first one is based on their total score. Um, that's just their raw power rating. Uh, but then I do adjust the rating for class, and it is on a standard scale. So, um, you know, running in uh, a race like this, you're going to have a higher class uh, rating, which is going to lower your overall score because um, you're going to have a bigger multiple uh, working against it. So you're going to see a lot of races where there is no A contender. Um, and I find, especially at Indiana with small pools, that can be really helpful um, to keep your tickets nice and thin. You may have more losers, but you're going to uh, make more money when you actually do cash rather than um, trying to go super deep. You can see in this one, the difference between the raw score and the adjusted um, is that, you know, you'd have to use an additional three horses in a seven horse field, which just isn't practical. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look uh, again. If you want to see the actual T3 grids, those will be posted on my Twitter uh, once scratches come out. So uh, in this first race, we have uh, number one forensic file, three to one, 73. He'll get a C letter grade. Uh, coming to number two, Astro Man, three to one, 59. Not going to use that one there. Uh, he's a warrior. 12 to 1, got a 60 power rating, not going to use. Wyman, 8 to 1, 73 power rating, going to get a C, so good value there. All-Star Justice, uh, 6 to 1, 73, going to get a C. And then 6 is kind of an interesting one, has a good um, run style to match the uh, to match the track. 68, very close to scoring a grade, um, would actually be a B grade if we use the raw score. So uh, that's one I might consider throwing in as a, as a small backup, but that's probably the only one here. Uh, jingle, 8 to 1, 62, not usable. So uh, when I get here, I'm going to end up going with a 1, 4, and 5. I'll use those pretty equally. And I might use the six on a backup ticket, but I don't want to go any deeper than that. Um, and my main concern with the six is just that lone speed uh, with that E7. I know there's a couple other E types that I have on, on my side, but um, if this horse really pushes to the front, that has been uh, has been running well. So um, we're going to go mostly through the one, four, five in that race, but we may have a saver on the six. Coming to race number two, five furlongs for Philly Maiden Claiming. Um, so as we go through here, the one horse 73 C now you'll notice that raw, this would be an A plus horse. Um, a lot of times these lightly raced horses will, uh, will have really high scores because of the fact that they haven't run before. So a lot of times their strikes are low and that can actually lead to a positive bonus, um, in their favor. So, um, you have number two, 56 is a no use three at two to one 73 c grade but again as we can see by our adjusted letter grades um, that's going to be the tops in this race the four is 67 and a not user uh, now that horse would have been an a if we used raw so again if we're looking at potential backups i would say the four and when we get down to the six would be my two choices the five five to one 64 no use the six 67, no use. The 755 power rating, no use. The 8 has a 75 adjusted power rating um, and gets a C letter grade. So that means that when all is said and done in the second race, I'm looking at using 138. If you wanted to have backups, I would use the, uh, the 4 and the 7. But uh, like I said, I'm going to keep my tickets pretty small tomorrow. So uh, race number three, we're going a mile and a 16th on turf for claimers, uh, 25,000 non-winners of three. And as we come down to our board, uh, we can see that uh, don't show weakness, good run style here, 76 
uh, letter grade and we'll get a C rating. Number two, Buckets of Rain, also that good run style. 7279 gets a C for an adjusted. You can see they both be A's if we were um, doing things on the raw scale. Uh, Jolting Joe, A plus, 104. Usually if I have one A plus in a race, that's going to be a single. Four is a no use at 64. Uh, five is a no use at 60. Six is a underneath use uh, or a, a backup use at 75. So that's a C letter grade. Seven is a 60. And so that's a non-use. So when I get down here to the bottom, I mean, I'm definitely going to be using that three very heavily. And then I'm going to be coming in and going with a uh, probably a one, two, and six for backups. Moving on to race number four, uh, we're going to mile 70 for Philly State Bird Maiden Claimer. So uh, you're going to get a really low level horses here. So you're going to see grades get knocked way down. Uh, New Year's Delight, 52, no use. 66, no use. 26, definitely not a use. Uh, number four, 44, no use. Uh, number five, 44, no use. Uh, number six, 13, no use. Number seven, 54, no use. So we're eliminating a good chunk of this field. Uh, quite whimsical, number eight, 34, no use. Finally, uh, get lucky justice, uh, six to one, 73 rating. So we'll give a C grade and a use. Uh, trip charge, 29, not usable. Prized cupcake, the number 11 at five to two, 77. Um, so that one will get used. And then the 12, light up justice, 50 and no use. So in this situation, I'm going to be pretty heavily through the nine and the 11. Now I will say uh, it does worry me a little bit that I don't have anything inside of the nine post and that can be a little bit daunting. Um, so I'd probably use the two again as a backup with that A letter grade in the raw score. Throw that one in um, and then not, if, if the nine scratches into about the five or six position, I may get rid of the backup. But um, at least for the time being, I'll, I'll keep it like this. That's still pretty thin. I can get away with that, I think. Moving on to race number five. Uh, now, we do have a fair number of horses that we can use in this five and a half furlong state bread allowance, non-winners of three lifetime. So Unbridled Victor is a 73C. Complex Justice of three to one is a 77C. Uh, you can see that the raw score favors the two more than the one. And that's why I like to have these grades side by side. It just helps me to see sort of which one I should put a slight priority on if I'm going to have to weight them differently. Uh, Fashion Nugget, 51, no use. Sudden Shift, 67, no use. Uh, number eight, uh, number five, sorry, Jeff the Runner, 81, a B grade on the adjusted. Would have been an A without it. Uh, number six, Empire Score, 70C. Number seven, uh, Rockin' All Night, 56, no use. Son of Batman, uh, 106A+. Plus. So I'm going to be really heavily weighted through that eight as long as he stays in. Uh, I'll put him over the five. Yeah, we're talking about he's here. So eight over five. Um, and then I would do the one, two, and six probably as backups. But um, anytime you get that A plus, that's going to be a, a likely a heavy single. And then using the one, two, five, and six and sort of uh, backup and saver tickets. Moving on to number six, we're going to go a mile and a 16th on the turf for Philly State bread allowance, not winners of one. Come down here. Uh, this is one where I've probably got a single. So I might be able to get some backup tickets on the previous race because I'm not using the one. I'm not using the two with a 31. I am using the three Myers Tiger at an A plus uh, with a 92 power rating. I'm not going to use uh, Down to Lane at, uh, with a 69 power rating. I won't use Hoosier Premium at 62. I won't use Cecil's Angel at 67. And I won't use Blue Skies Night at 60. I won't use uh, Birdie the Beauty at 55, and I won't use Starlet Express at 54. So when all is said and done, I'm going to use the three. Let's make a spot for this one here. Just going to use the three as sort of my main. Um, if I did have any backups at all, I would use the four and the six, but I'm not looking to use that. I'm going to probably have all my hopes and dreams through Myers Tiger. Um, it looks like I won't be alone. I'll probably have a lot of company there and um, may kind of kill my payout, but it looks like the the one that has the most separation on the card. So that's the one I'll go with. State bread made in special weight, 36,000. Now, 
with some of these, what's really hard is because they don't have any data, as we've talked about before, um, it can be really hard to quantify. So if you see something that you like in these horses, um, might be worthy of, of uh, putting in some of that old school handicapping. You can see from the, the sort of uh, raw figures here or the raw power numbers, this is a race you're going to want to spread pretty deep in. Um, I think I have pretty good coverage with the grades that I have, um, but certainly uh, these are more likely to be erratic based on um, based on the lightly raced nature of, of these horses. So uh, number one, 64, I'm not gonna use. Number two, protected area, actually I'm gonna use as a C grade. Uh, Leo's Roar, I'll use as a B grade. Scotty on Edge, the number four, I'll use as a C grade. Number five, I'll use as an A grade. Uh, that's my top rated horse in the race uh, with the one start of 39. You can see that compares quite well to the other horses with races under their belts. Um, although this one has a, has a better fig. Uh, number six at seven to two, 57, not usable. Um, but I do see this here um, and I see that it comes in on a low morning line. So that tells me there's some buzz about this horse and I might want to think about including this one as well. Uh, number seven, Vortex Rising, 56, no use. Number eight, Mr. Macho, 83B. Uh, Buckshot Run is the number nine, 61, I'm not using there. And then number 10, Cast Iron Alex, 30 to one. I actually have a C letter grade on, uh, on that one. Um, again, one of the few with experience. I always think that goes a long way. And then number 11, Charlie Two Socks. I have a 44 and an X. Uh, again, without seeing money um, coming in on these horses, is going to be hard to say, but... Um, as I'm looking through this, I see I've got the, uh, the eight as a B and the three as a B. So I'm going to use those as sort of my top two horses there. And I've got some great value. I've got a five to two isn't great, but the 10 to one on Leo's roar, that will do quite nicely. Um, I'll take the, th uh, I'm sorry, I'll take the five in first. Um, and that is uh, Malibu Classic at 15 to 1. So um, I'm liking that horse. Again, lightly raced. So I may think about um, potentially just using these kind of all equally, you know, just with a slight preference to the 5. But 5, 3, and 8 uh, will be heavily played on my tickets. And then um, I'll roll with the 2, 4, and 10 um, in more of backup rolls. All right, uh, moving on to race number eight, uh, Maiden Claimers on the turf, um, going seven and a half, so I treat it much more like a route than a sprint. Philly Maiden Claimers, uh, fairly low level, so um, a lot of room for improvement. You're going to see a lot of low scores. 24X, uh, that's a not use. Number two, 48X, uh, Weekend Getaway, number three, 24X. Uh, EV is the number four, 42X. Number five is the first one we're going to look at, which is Polyester Bride, uh, 12 to 1, 75 gets a C grade. But you can see on the adjusted score, that one would have had an A+. Plus. So it's a top-rated horse, definitely one I want to be looking at here. Um, number six, Pearl Girl, uh, has had plenty of opportunities to run. I don't see a lot special there. Um, so I'm going to pass on the six at 40. I'm going to pass on the seven at 42. Uh, the eight. Is at 62. Uh, you can see adjusted grade. It should be at a C. Um, I might keep that one on. Uh, the number nine, What's Up Sweet? Uh, what's Up Sweets? 55X. Again, that one will rate out to a C. Based on how thin this ticket's going to be, um, I might be able to include that one as well. Number 10, uh, Pertinacious Tiz, 38, not going to use. This is where it gets interesting. So this horse would have been an A. Uh, in the raw score, it ends up dropping down to a 68 um, and getting thrown out, uh, but is also eligible, as is uh, the, the first overall uh, or the co-first choice, which is Anna's Moonlight at 75, which would also be a C. So on paper right now, it looks like I'm just using 5 and 12, but the problem is once the 12 likely scratches out, um, which based on weather I think is is relatively feasible. That probably brings the 11 in, but the 11 may also scratch out. So that's a situation where I'm going to just keep the 8 and the 9 in. 
um, because I think once the carnage is done here, they're going to probably end up elevating. Um, once I get the scratches out, that will adjust these power ratings. Um, everything is in connection to how they look against the rest of the field. So um, once that happens, I would anticipate that this 8 and 9 will jump up into some categories where the 11 and 12 were dominant if those two end up scratching out. Um, and I might have to sort of reevaluate what the last leg of this uh uh, of like this pick six, pick five look like. So uh, that takes us to the end of race number eight. And then race number nine, we jump into the quarter. So um, a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker video tonight um, and a little uh, bit uh, different way of looking at things. Uh, if you've been using the grids, uh, again, like I said, those will be posted after scratches tomorrow. So you can go on my Twitter account and, uh, and find those there. Um, you'll still get to see everything you've seen before, but just a little different way of looking at, uh, at looking at how the horses stack up, combining a lot of what we did in the video, but now it's just in sort of one easily digestible number. So, uh, good luck as we begin our week here at Indiana Grand.